Today on Real Life, the benefits of proper hydration on living well. Pastor John Guest brings the seven minute word. Strengthening men's faith through Adam's quest and the music of Malcolm Williams. Today on Real Life. God loves you, Jesus died for you, the Holy Spirit, He empowers you, and the Bible is your guide to abundant life. That is real life. I'm Don Black with my wife Terry Hello. and our founder Norma Bixler. <laughs> we are in summertime. All right, summertime. <laughs> Thunderstorms. And don't you have, don't you have, I didn't know. Will you want to sing a little more? Can we get another that's, the mic, song, that's the only verse I know. <laughs> well, uh, do, didn't you have some exciting happen yes, we before did. today? Mm -hmm. Yes, we I mean, sure maybe did. more than one thing. I don't know. Yeah, well. yeah, we sure have. And it gets you know, as as your kids get older, mm -hmm. and they start becoming independent, it's sad. There's a sadness to it, and an yeah. excitement. That's right. It's mm -hmm. that mixed Mix. bag. Bittersweet. Well, you who know. are we talking about? Oh, our oldest son, Don. He graduated from high school. Oh boy. So He's you go know, to college. we just finished our we just finished celebrating graduation and so it's you Did know Did he go to the prom? Yes, he went to the prom <laughs> I too. know everything. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he, we went to the prom and he and I he had a great time. And um, and then we had graduation and we had family and friends. They were joining us with that as well, so that was really great. We went back great. to Tennessee. Yes, we, we did. Back to, Don graduated from his high school in Tennessee. We went mm -hmm. back and we spent some time, some time there and just spend, spent quality time with his friends and, of course, all his activities, graduation mm -hmm. activities. Right. We, uh, we had to rent a house because yeah. we, we don't have a house there anymore. <laughs> no, Thank you know. God you don't have a house <laughs> there anymore. That's right. uh -huh. it's, it's, it's always, it's always um, like I said, it's always bittersweet because right. now he's going to go off to college this fall. He's going to go to the University of Tennessee and uh, he's studying aerospace engineering. Aerospace engineering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my. I know. That's what I think too. Oh my. But <laughs> well, he can do it. I oh, know yeah, he can. I, I'm actually completely that confident way. in yes. his abilities to, to be a great student. Mm -hmm. But but I'd, we'd show pictures and we'd, we'd show all that, but Don's not like, he doesn't like that kind of stuff. No, he doesn't. And you he know, our, I'd be mad because we were talking about it. And you know, oh. yeah. so well, I brought, the subject. and Dylan's still in school too. They're not out of yeah. school until, you know, I don't know when, middle of June or something like that. So, you know, Tennessee was always different. They didn't start, we started the, like the first of August and we were done in May. And Pennsylvania's not like that. But I don't think it's good to start in August. Well, it's still But then warm. I'm in Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's still summertime. I mean, yeah. I think it's so. hot. That's hot. right. I grew up where we went after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's well, sort of like that you, here. Yeah, that's, that's where, yeah. yeah. That's well, here's right. some good news. Mm -hmm. We're getting ready to go on vacation. Oh, yes, we are. And we're going to go on a family vacation. Hallelujah. Yes. And just mm -hmm. get, uh, take, take the kids and head off on a on a holiday. That's right. I find it's getting more difficult as they're getting older to... You have no idea. <laughs> it's all the scheduling. And, it is. You know, and their, and their part-time jobs and they want to do, you know, camp counseling. They want to do all these activities and trying to coordinate it. So mom, me, I had said, this is the date. No one can plan anything around that date. We are going on vacation. Which so. includes me. That's right. <laughs> so, save the Especially date. Especially you. Yes. Especially you. <laughs> Don't make any plans. Those right. are, those I'm are sure our. they're excited. Oh, I, I'm excited. You our know? vacations are always exciting after the fact. Uh -huh. you know, because right. we look back at it with fond memories and we kind of do fun stuff on it. That's right. On a, and sometimes it becomes an adventure. You know, vacations mm -hmm. can become an adventure for yeah. the black family. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. get into some stuff. Well, last year we went to Niagara Falls, and that was the first time for, I think, everybody in our family except Don and I to see that. And that's beautiful. That was really beautiful. I, you know, they really. It, it was, was really better great. than going this winter too. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Because I think it froze. Niagara yeah. ice cube. <laughs> <laughs> Under that ice cube is a big waterfall. Well, we want to we want to stay in, in touch with you. So remember that we have an email address. 
that you can send us an email and tell us what's going on in your life, tell us what's going on, how God's touched you is really what would be great to hear a testimony. So send it to family at ctvn.org. As our, 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 part, our habit is, and as our ministry is, prayer partners are standing by. Absolutely. They're here to take your call, stand with you in prayer, be an encourager to you. So feel free to make the call. We're, we love you and we want to be connected to you in, mm -hmm. in our family. We always talk no more about being in the family. Absolutely. Right. And one thing I just want to tell you, uh, when you call a prayer partner, we're not going to ask for your, just your first name, not your whole name, not your address. That, that's not, we just want to pray for you. Mm -hmm. Unle unless you want to receive our materials, like our newsletter, then we need to get to a mailing. But we, we don't put you in any con condition for your prayer. Well, you know, sometimes... Uh, People are afraid to call. Mm -hmm. I've met people that said, well, I'd like to call, but uh, I didn't want to give my full name. And I, I just happened to remember that. Mm -hmm. And that's well, why I, I said very, that, very because valuable. it's private. Mm -hmm. it's we don't sell our names no. or anything like that. No, 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 no. no. Mm -hmm. We keep the relationship as confidential and as personal as we can. The scripture is the center of what we do at Cornerstone. And today's verse all is from 1 John 4, mm -hmm. verse 7 and 8. Listen as, as we read what John wrote. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And the one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Amen. You know, we talk about love many times in all kinds of meanings. You know, that word in the English language can mean all kinds of things. You know, I love pizza. No, I don't. I was going to say, I didn't think but you did. But people say that. Oh, I love ice cream. Or well, I, I love strawberries. She I loves do. strawberries. <laughs> but love is, this kind of love yeah. that, that John is mm -hmm. talking about is a spiritual love. It's mm -hmm. a dynamic spiritual love that you can't have outside of God. You just can't have that kind That's of right. love. Mm -hmm. he, is a, he is love. Absolutely. And we need to love as he loves. The only way we can love the way God loves is through the power of his Holy Spirit. Absolutely. So let's get started. Amen. Let's get started with a song. Malcolm Williams is here. Mm -hmm. He's going to lead us as he sings, you ought, you ought to help. Malcolm, we're waiting for you, brother. Amen. This is just a little churchy song that you can clap your hands with. Coming from Chicago with this. If you only knew, if you only knew who would I've been through, what I've been through, you wouldn't be looking at me. Praising God too. You Listen, see, I was sick, thought I would get well, but Jesus touched me. I got a story to tell. Now that you know, now that you know who Lord, you ought to help me. You ought to help me praise You can clap your hands right there. Oh.
stomp your feet, and then we rock side to side and bend our knees. Help me pray, help me pray. Help me praise him. Look, clap your hands and stomp your feet. Come on and rock side to side, spin your knees. Come on, clap your hands and stomp your feet. Come on and rock side to side, and spin your knees. Now that you know what I've been through, you ought to help me. You ought to help me. We ought to get Malcolm and do his own exercise video. <laughs> you raise think, him. I think that could be a fresh start. <laughs> well, Norman was just talking. Some people might have t uh, trouble bending their knees. Not <laughs> after a little while, they won't. <laughs> We're all warmed up. But he can, and I like and oh, listening and I watching. Love. Oh, he has great <laughs> energy. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Well, we've all heard about that it's so important to drink plenty of water. And, for, and if you're trying to lose weight, as always, me. It's necessary to drink water as part of any weight loss program. Today, fitness expert Stacy Longo shares why it's so important to take proper hydration into account for good health in this week's Living Well. Today we're going to talk about the importance of proper hydration. Hey Stacy, can you just share with us why do you think we, what's the importance of drinking water? Well, our bodies are 70% water. Mm -hmm. Every system, every organ, every cell depends on water. Um, our muscle is 70% water, wow. so especially if we're going to exercise, we need water. Muscle is made of two things, protein and water. Mm -hmm. So if you are getting charley horses or muscle cramps, you are so extremely dehydrated and okay. that, that's a sign, you know, you need to What are increase. the signs of being dehydrated? Well, there are many and they're very dangerous actually, okay. especially if you let it go for too long. Um, first of all, you get very lethargic, very tired. Okay. It's mm -hmm. very sneaky. And mm -hmm. another thing, the same trigger um, in the body for hunger is the same for thirst. So a lot of times I can tell when people are don't have enough water because they're just craving sugar. Oh, they, yeah. they want that sugar to make them to get that surge to give right. them more energy but what they really are is dehydrated mm -hmm. and um, dehydration can cause pulled muscles, sore joints. Mm -hmm. um, dehydration can actually cause your blood uh, volume to be thicker your heart has to pump harder mm. dehydration can actually cause a heart attack wow. many heart attacks in extreme situations yeah. are from people being so you know extremely dehydrated and they don't even know it well what do you say about people like my mom for example she doesn't like to drink water that's exactly and so right me, sometimes i'll say to her well you got to drink and she'll just drink like a cup of two or of water and she considers maybe coffee would be it so can right. you talk about I what can about talk that? about this forever mm -hmm. things that have water in them we don't count as water especially <gasps> anything that has caffeine in it like tea oh. like coffee because caffeine right off the bat is a natural diuretic so okay. here you are you need water for energy because right. one of the um, downfalls of dehydration is um, depression feeling tired feeling lethargic so then what do we do we drink caffeine to get up but that caffeine is throwing more water out of our body so then we drink more caffeine and then it just you it's like a downhill spiral into severe deep dehydration what about teas that have no caffeine yes. oh I talk about this every day it is my opinion just my professional opinion that decaffeinated products still have some caffeine in them mm -hmm. so as long as you're drinking enough water to offset that 
you can go ahead and do that. But, you know, tea drinkers and coffee drinkers are very, very um, dehydrated. You can sometimes see it in the skin. Right. A lot of times, I'll know my clients are dehydrated when they walk right in the door because their skin is all is all dry and wrinkly. Oh <laughs> and, and I'll say, you haven't been drinking your water. And they're like, how did you know? <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm a tea drinker. I love tea. So I'm guilty at sometimes I'll take my tea instead of water. So I, I need to make some changes. As long as you mm -hmm. get enough water in, you can mm -hmm. still drink your tea. And with people who drink tea all day, I'll say, well, why don't we cut your tea in half mm -hmm. and add the other half in water? Well, how now, much water? Ideally, and we've all heard this before, but it's very true, mm -hmm. eight, eight ounces of water per day okay. is, mm -hmm. if you can just start with that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're an exerciser, if you're uh, a runner, if you're getting into shape, if you're working out, as we said, muscle is 70% water, you need even more. So, because I personal train clients and you're losing more mm -hmm. water through breath and through sweat, they need even more water to keep wow. up with it. And mm -hmm. I suggest a gallon a day for, oh for those people. Now, what about, um, do you have a preference on any kind of water? I, I mean, certainly that's do. sort of a, yes. a, a big topic is the type it, of water. It really is, it really does make a difference. First of all, you really don't want to drink tap water. Have you ever gone to different parts of the city and been at your friend's house and you go to drink cup of their water and you're like, whoa, that, that tastes different. You right. never know what the water companies are doing. Mm -hmm. So purified water, um, you know, you can even use um, a Brita on, okay. on your tap sure. water if you don't want to spend a lot of money. A lot right. of people will get um, different uh, purifiers on their water system mm -hmm. to help. Uh, when you're buying bottled water, you really have to read the fine print because um, a lot of times they're just bottling tap water. Oh, so, okay. Uh, but spring is best. Sp okay. True spring water has the minerals in, but has taken the impurities out. Okay. Distilled is, they've taken the impurities out, but they've taken the minerals yeah. out as well. Oh, okay. so, so that's not that great. So okay. if you want to take distilled, you just have to make sure you're, you're getting your minerals through a very top shelf, you know, vitamin mineral supplement. Well, you've really given us a lot of great hints of what we need to do about being hydrated, drinking plenty of water, drinking the right kind of water, not drinking coffee and tea. We can, but not as but much. Offset it with water. Right. Correct. And that drinking water will help us have a healthy lifestyle. Absolutely. So, and you'll look get better. Oh, yeah. We'll look better. That's right. Awesome. <laughs> it's, it's just yes. such a win, 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 win. Absolutely. Thank you so oh, much for so coming. Welcome. We I'm just honored. really appreciate it. And we Thank hope you. to have you back again. Thanks Thank again. You. on Real Life. Reverend Dr. John Guest begins a new teaching series on the seven minute word. And coming up next, a band of brothers pursuing a purpose through Adam's quest. That's next on Real Life. There is really no greater joy in my life than to see my children and grandchildren safe and happy. When I was young, the world seemed slower and safer. You could turn on the television and not be embarrassed by what might come up on the screen. Then I found Cornerstone, a television network whose mission is to uplift and inspire, that safe place that holds Christian family values at the forefront of what it does. And that's why I love Cornerstone, because I know I can leave the room and know that when my son is watching the kids programming, that the same values that my mom and dad placed in me are coming through the screen. Cornerstone is helping to make sure that the lasting legacy of faith and family values is instilled in our family and reinforced in our own lives with great teaching and preaching. They're here to support my family and yours 24 hours a day, seven days a week with prayer and programming that bring biblical principles to light. That's Cornerstone, and that's the difference. Life is uncertain. Who can tell what's just around the corner? Every week on In Touch, we explore the certainty of God. He's revealed Himself to us through the Bible and invites us to walk with Him along a path of promise. Join me here each week for In Touch. Join Dr. Charles Stanley for biblical encouragement each week on In Touch.
can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on It's Supernatural. Our next guests are committed to seeing family strengthened and men coming into a stronger relationship with God in their walk of faith. Mm. Bob Jamison is the founder and president of Adam's Quest. It's an organization that's dedicated to helping churches lead and guide men into mm. strong relationships with Jesus. And Danny Parker is the Pennsylvania director of Christian Leadership Concepts. Gentlemen, I want to say that, I'm going to say start your engines. <laughs> What you want to talk to men, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> start your engines. <laughs> yeah, start your engine. Well, let's start, let's start with what God has done in you first. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I like for our family to get to know you about, about the kind of men you are and where you came mm -hmm. from. Wonderful. And then we'll talk about what God's doing through you. So, so let's start. Where are you from? And tell us about your family. Yeah. I lived in western Pennsylvania all my, time, all my life. And I uh, lived in Pittsburgh really all my adult life. And mm -hmm. uh, my, my wife's from the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, Kim is a, <laughs> Kim's a musician and uh, teaches piano. And uh, my daughter is now uh, finishing up her sophomore year at Allegheny College. Oh, she is? Oh, yes. It, that's over in Erie, sort it's, of? It feels like Erie. Oh, it's, okay. it's, <laughs> Meadville's awful close. Okay, all right. <laughs> So, it gets sure. in that uh, the snow belt of Pennsylvania. Okay, so every every time that. I drive up 79 to go to go visit her, as soon as we get to Route 80, it starts snowing. So yeah. it's it's that oh, kind of weather yeah. weather yeah. belt up in up in that uh, mm -hmm. lake effect mm -hmm. exactly. area. Exactly. Well, mm -hmm. tell us about how you met your wife. How that how that family was started. Yeah. We met uh, when we were undergraduate students at Carnegie Mellon. I came to Pittsburgh to come to school here, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we both got involved with uh, InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. Yeah. And there was a there was a, a, a Christmas program, and we it was a you bring a date and you bring some food, and we were g going with somebody else. And when we arrived there, I guess uh, apparently uh, the, uh, uh, the the gentleman who had invited her to accompany him uh, had said, "Hey, it, it was not a dress up party," but he said. Uh, hey, I have an idea. I'll dress up as Santa Claus, and you come dressed up like an elf, and I'll meet you at the party. Well, she dressed up like like an elf, and came, and he didn't dress up. Oh. Nobody else was dressed up, oh. so. Oh. so so she stood out and caught my attention. Oh, I bet my she did. Goodness. Yes, Who <laughs> already did. told her that? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, well, he my. went right out of the picture. Right? <laughs> that relationship was oh, an end. She was looking for somebody else yeah. at that point. I kind of did you a favor, I think. Yeah. That's right. So it sounds like since y'all met at InterVarsity. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. That, so you were a believer. Yes, that I was. You, you were a Christian at a I young age. I came to Christ as a teenager, and mm -hmm. but had never been mm -hmm. discipled. And I, uh, I was in the kingdom, but still spiritually immature and, and really seeking. And uh, I found uh, I found at InterVarsity a place where I, I you know, really I have a, a, a profound understanding and appreciation for what it means to be connected with the body of Christ and mm -hmm. to be part of a group of people that make you better and you make them better and you're on this journey with Jesus together. So mm -hmm. I discovered that on campus. And a strong, and strong legacy. And absolutely. That ministry has been involved and in in active for such a long time. Mm -hmm. That's true. Powerful. Well, well, and it, it must have propelled you to continue in your faith. You know, once you graduate from college and you still were a practicing, I mean, you were professing Christian and you lived your life based on those principles as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, I felt connected. I, I, you know, I understood what it meant to be part of the body of Christ. I've been on some mission trips, and I don't know how this happens, but and you maybe maybe you've experienced this too. But you go to another hemisphere, and you meet people that you don't speak the same language with them, and you have nothing in common with them. But you spend a couple of days with them, and you get on a plane to come back, and you're weeping. You're like, what? What is this all about? Well, mm. God just connected with you, yeah. with the mm. powerful, and you, you felt like, I have family all around the world I didn't Absolutely. realize I had, Absolutely. and I'm meeting them, and uh, yeah. that's, mm. that's what it is. God brings that bond, uh, a heart-to-heart -heart bond. Absolutely. Well, Danny, tell us about your story. Where, where, where are you from? I, I would say I'm a third Tennessean, a third Georgian, <laughs> and a third parts beyond. <laughs> oh, you sound like a quill. What, 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 that, 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 that's a good question. I was in 11 schools growing up, four high schools. Wow. And uh, my senior year in high school, which was my fourth high school, I would be cussing and carrying on down at Babe Malloy's in Knoxville. 
out in South Knoxville, and somebody would say, shh, don't cuss, there's a young life leader. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, well, who the blankety blanks he think he is? And long story short, that guy cared for me. Mm -hmm. he, he acted like I mattered to him. Mm -hmm. And I got involved in Young Life. I went to a Young Life weekend retreat as a high school senior. And I went from this crazy wild guy to a guy who understood Jesus' love for him, and I became a Christian. That's awesome. Hallelujah. Yeah. That, that was at, awesome. right out at, in high school or after I was high in high school. Wow. I was two different people in my fourth high school. I was a pagan of pagans, and then I was a Christian. And, well, uh, thank God for Young Life. I remember it in my high school. It, you know, it, it, it has been around for years, and it's made an impact in so many yeah. people's lives. Yeah. Wonderful testimony. Yeah. There you are. I went to uh, I went to a Young Life camp in Colorado right after graduating from high school. And I actually got injured out there, but it was interesting because I met uh, there was a girl out there who was working on the work crew, and she was stuck down in the laundry washing clothes for the other high school kids and college kids that were out there. And it turned out that a couple of years later, I said to her, "You need to get unlavaliered from that guy." and go out with me. Oh, and, wow. and we've been married for 45 years. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. You were right. Congratulations. Yeah. Now, she we wasn't were, dressed up like Santa's elf was. No, no. We, were both, we were both involved in Young Life Leadership at the University of Tennessee, which, hallelujah, your son's going just there. just made that decision. Go Vols. And, uh, and you sort of have orange on. Is that a, like an orange that's kind of coral? Accident, Terry. I, no, that's not I, I have an orange motorcycle and about 30 orange shirts and a couple of orange hats. I like orange. Yeah. So you better get to it. like it. The orange real good. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we were both involved in Young Life and, as leaders in Young Life, and uh, that's where we met. And uh, God was gracious to us just, just to let her be really. The, the second greatest thing in my life was meeting my wife. Well, let's talk about yep. kids. Now, do you guys have children? We have two children. Uh, we have two children and one grandbaby. I've shown him. I've shown my grandbaby, who's nine months old, to all the people around here. <laughs> one, one grandbaby. One yeah. grandbaby. Yeah. And, Boy and uh, girl. A little girl, Valerie, Aww. and she's nine months old. Our two sons. Our oldest son. Our youngest son spent seven years working for Young Life. He's currently a, um, a general manager for Chick Fil A, with hopes to get his own. And our oldest son just finished his eighth deployment. He's been in the United States Navy for 22 years, and he's oh going to retire my. this summer. Oh, wow. good. Now, which one has the baby? The, my youngest son, that, the one that's with Chick-fil-A now. And we love Chick-fil-A, so yeah. we're just... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do, too. I know. Who can't love Chick-fil-A? Who can't love Chick-fil-A? Who can't? Now, how about children for you? One daughter, and okay. she's adopted. Her name is Bethany. Uh -huh. uh, we had been trying to have children for nine and a half years, and we're not able to have children. And mm. we went to one adoption agency, and that didn't work. And we came to Bethany Christian Services, oh, right. and mm -hmm. we had an adoption that fell through, and we were oh, just definitely. we were just heartbroken. Mm -hmm. And uh, my my wife was teaching piano students working the Suzuki method you start with right. three-year-olds you know very young kids and I was at uh, Family Guidance Incorporated doing youth ministry and we were like Lord you know is it always to be somebody else's children and not our own and so we were wrestling with that and and we were hurting with that and and uh, God provided a, a daughter through adoption and she has been worth the wait she is oh, an wow. incredible answer to prayer Yay. outstanding young lady mm -hmm. she is uh, re she just last week declared her major she's uh, double majoring in neuroscience and psychology and minoring in economics she oh said my daddy gosh. is it okay if I major in this I said that's fine as long as you don't expect your old man to help you with your homework. <laughs> I think you're going on your own there. I don't think I can I help totally you very much. I totally relate to that. So I understand. Yes. Uh -huh. They gave up on me helping the homework when they think we're in the middle school. I think, oh. that, I think that was the last time. Unless it's history. I can kind of help out oh, with history. Yeah. Uh -huh. But when it comes to science and math, <laughs> dad, dad's not a good resource. Uh -huh. they got to blaze their own trail there. That's right. They're totally teaching me. Mm -hmm. I can't wait till they can do their taxes. You have that. nicknames for your wife and your daughter, right? <laughs> yes. Um, well, I don't my, know if you want to tell that. <laughs> I love the nickname. Yeah. That's why I'm on television My now. wife is the piano whisperer. She's a uh, oh, piano oh, teacher. My daughter's yeah. my green-eyed girl. Oh, oh green -eyed I, girl. So I suppose she has green eyes. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> well, that's, oh, that's that precious. So I have nicknames, too, for Terry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> 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 well, well, no, I'll keep those to ourselves. Well, yeah, we're on the break. Now we're curious. They're, they're, yeah. very, they're very precious and sweet. But we want to talk about the ministry. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna come back and, and spend some time talking about ministry because you're, although it's great to know you and get to know you a little bit about your family, 
we, we know that God's doing something through you yes. that uh, we want all of our family at home to understand and maybe get involved with because it's an exciting change. There's just some changes that are happening. Sure. What used to be, what used to be uh, not happening in the area of men's ministry is happening now. God's changing some things, Don. He yeah. is, brother, and I can't wait to talk more about it and uh, hear more details about what he's doing. But before we get to that, we're going to uh, ask Norma to tell us what's coming up next. Mm -hmm. Well, it's time for our daily inspiration from God's Word today. And we begin a new series of teachings from Reverend Dr. John Guest, the senior pastor of Christ Church at Grove Farm in Swickley, Pennsylvania. His series is called Intimacy with God, which he begins now on today's Seven Minute Word. Great to be with you and to be chatting with you today about prayer, actually under the title of being intimate with God, because prayer is really speaking. And speech, how we communicate and talk to each other, is a very important part of intimacy. In fact, you often hear the maybe wives complaining that their husbands don't even really talk to them anymore. You often hear parents complaining that the kids are either into their iPhones or not really talking to each other or to their parents. It's, uh, it's quite an issue when it comes to the business of praying that we're really talking to God. We're not making speeches to God. We're not quoting theology to God. We are talking to him. So Jesus, when he taught us to pray, as he does in the scriptures, I'm reading actually from Matthew chapter 6 here in the Sermon on the Mount, when he teaches us to pray, in principle, when he gives us the Lord's Prayer, he says in the first place, you say, Father. Now what's that word mean? It means dad. It means a personal, intimate expression of a relationship you have with Almighty God. So, Abba, which is the word that's used in the Hebrew here, is the word that kids would use running around when they would speak to their dad, Abba. It was the familiar term to call him Father. And when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, and through that therefore teaching us, the first great principle is this, that it's an intimate relationship by which we can come to God and call him dad, call him father. Now every, every uh, child, when he comes to the parent and really talks to the parent, shares what's on his or her heart, gives the parent pleasure. Parents love to hear from their kids, not just to be asked of, but to hear what's going on in their lives and to seek advice, to express love, and relationship and share their dreams well when you come and talk to God one of the great things that Jesus is teaching in this is that God loves to hear from his children what's going on in their lives so feel free just because it is an intimate relationship to call him father now there are two ways in which the Bible teaches that God is our father in the first place he's the father of all creation because he created everything. But there's a second, much more intimate and personal meaning, and that is that when God by his Spirit comes into us, to be more straightforward, when we ask Jesus to come into our lives and be our Savior, his Spirit witnesses with our spirits, says the Bible, that we are his children. Do you get that? His children so that we can therefore call him dad. Not everybody has that personal and intimate relationship with him, and that's a real gift. I'll tell you this, sadly, my dad committed suicide when I was age seven. I loved my dad, and suddenly he was gone. But this heavenly father, the night I asked Jesus to come into my life, I went out onto the streets of London, I'd been listening to Billy Graham preach. I offered my life up to Christ, walked forward and gave it over to him. 
And I went out onto the streets of London knowing that I had a father and that that father cared for me. Reminds me of an instance where I was preaching in a church down in Memphis. It was an, a black church. So here I am preaching to about 2,000 African-American faces looking back at me. And the girl who sang before I spoke had this as her theme line. Beautiful song. 200 voice youth choir behind me. I have a father, she was singing, and I know he cares for me. To know that, she was speaking about her heavenly father, not an earthly father. She knew she had a father, and she knew he cared for her. So prayer is talking to dad, coming to him. And if you know him as dad, because Jesus is in your life, you've got equal entrance to the throne room of God to enter and be there as his child in the same way Jesus is. The Bible says that we're actually co-heirs with Jesus. Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brethren, his brothers or sisters. We've got that personal relationship and we need to take advantage of it. So let me talk with God right now as we close. Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for loving me as much right now as when you died for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're present here with me. And thank you, dear Father in heaven, that right now I have this opportunity to share my heart, my dreams, my life with you. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Look around you. Every day, heroes abound in our country. We're surrounded by people who courageously face difficult obstacles life has thrown in their paths. Tune in each week to meet people who show there are positive, godly solutions to tough, critical situations. We'll tackle challenging life issues such as abortion, stem cell research, adoption, and abstinence, and show that every human life is valuable and precious. Join us for inspiring stories of people facing life head on. Thanks to you, Cornerstone Network is able to provide wholesome family programs that bring the good news of Jesus Christ to viewers around the world. Did you know that your support is making a difference in someone's life? Think about that. For 35 years, your gifts to Cornerstone have provided family-friendly television around the clock, entertaining and encouraging the entire family, bringing the love of God to a world in need. Thank you again. Your support is impacting lives with the love of Jesus Christ. Back with us is Bob Jamison, the founder and president of Adam's Quest, and Danny Parker, the Pennsylvania director of Christian Leader Co Leadership Concepts, talking with us about reaching men with the gospel. Thanks again for joining us. Thank yes, you. Thank you, Terry. We're so glad you're here. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to get right to it. Let's get right to it. Tell us what's going on in men's ministry and men's outreach here in this area. For, for me, one of the main things going on is there are a lot of hungry men in our city. There are many, many, many men sitting in our churches who have a desire to experience the fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think they just need somebody to come along and help them 
experience that fullness. Mm -hmm. We have a real hunger for men to grow up in Christ. We, mm -hmm. we, we see that over and over. Jesus didn't just call us to make decisions. He wants us to make disciples. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I read a book uh, last summer. A co-author knew somebody who was in the oil industry. And in fact, his friend got named the oil man of the year. So this, the author didn't really know much about that industry, but he, he wanted to congratulate his friend, shook his hand. Hey, you must be a great prospector. And the guy said, well, actually, he says, I'm, I'm not a prospector. He says, well, I, I, I did something. I was going to close 24 wells. We had been pumping oil out of them, and we figured we got all the oil that was there. And he said, I got this crazy idea. What if I just drilled down deeper in the oils, oil wells I already have? I wonder what would happen. Everyone but one of those wells had more oil there than they knew. Wow. Uh, I think the, the state of men in the church is that they, they've gone shallow, and they're disappointed that they didn't get very much out of their church experience. Wow. Nobody is challenging them to go deep in their faith. God has a lot of riches for them and a lot of treasure for them to discover. If they are willing to go deep, somebody needs to help them to go deep, teach and challenge them to go deep and show them how to do it. That's, that's what we're about. That's what I was going to say. Is that what your ministry is about? That's it. We are making disciples of men. Wow. Yeah. Is it inside the church, in association with the church? How, how, how we do you partner work? with churches, but we find men outside the church as well, uh, all over the city of, of Pittsburgh. We're developing a network of men who who form community together, and and kind of they experience what the disciples experienced 2,000 years ago, having a band of brothers together, locking arms together with brothers, and following Jesus, having a journey with Jesus and with each other. What do you? What happens? I mean, is it? A, are they? like sporting events that you do, classes that you do. Can you share what, what happens? Let me, let, let me tell you, when I came to work at Pitts, in Pittsburgh at Orchard Hill Church, we were called a church that was a mile wide and an inch deep. Okay. And we focused on one man at a time. And in focusing on one man at a time and trying to help one man at a time grow into, into the fullness of Christ, attain to the wholeness, mm -hmm. fullness of Christ, become mature in the knowledge of the Son of God, we formed groups of men, just like Jesus had 12 men. We formed groups of men, which in those groups, they learned how to do what Jesus said. A new commandment I give you, love one another. They learned how to love one, relationally, they learned how to love one another. And in the process, they also studied and learned how to love their God even more. But mm. even more than that, they learned how much God really loved them. Mm. We've never that, experienced that before. Oh, well, really? Danny, why, why is it, or either one of you guys, why is it that over the last 20 years or so, men have slipped away from the church or not engaged in the church as much as women have yeah. and have taken a back seat, if you, if you will. Now, I don't mean not getting saved, but I love your analogy of drilling deeper. Why, yeah. why is it that? Why does that happen? Well, first of all, I just want to affirm the, how demonstrably true what you just said is. 37% of church members in North America are men. 63% are women. Wow. And if you ask uh, the family bookstores, who is your clientele? Who buys the books? Uh, it's, it's about two to one or three to one. Women, that's their audience. Men aren't buying the books. They're not buying the, the teaching videos. And so and for, for men, they're left out and they're not connected with the church. They're not connected with the community. We have to create communities of men who are connecting with each other and with Jesus on a regular basis. I would, I would say to that, and I used to not like to say this, but you don't connect men into community if you don't have a champion. Mm. Tanchioka, and a lot of us know him, he's a Pittsburgh Steeler. He, mm. he is a champion mm. of men coming to the fullness mm. of Christ. Mm. Bob Jamison's a champ, champion. Mm. I'm a ch Unfortunately, you have to have a champion. Mm. And it can't just be a layman in your church. It's got to be somebody on your staff that's, that's really championing. Because as we know, just sitting in the pews, it, that, that, that doesn't make, it doesn't do it. Somebody well, has want, to click. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Norm. I wanted to know if there's a man watching. Yes. What does he do to get in a group? Connect with uh, with Danny or with me. We have groups that are forming all over the city right now. So this would be this all is a great over time. The city. Yes. Can you have a website? Well, do you have, we'll put a link. Do you have a website that people can Absolutely. come up? We'll put a link on our website Wonderful. so people can come and find that. Wonderful. A wife might want to encourage their husband, or a, mm -hmm. a grandma might want to encourage their grandson, or or their son, or their son. Yes. I mean, we've, had, sure. we've had wives mm -hmm. in other churches encourage their pastor. Yeah. To, to let their men have this experience, mm -hmm. and that's how we've seen 
uh, this model of discipleship happen for in other churches? For some reason, something needs to click with men that they need to, to gather with mm-hmm. a team. For some reason, men understand if they're being sent, to, being deployed in Iraq, I need to gather a platoon around me of really mm-hmm. good guys I can depend on. They have my back, I have theirs. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they're uh, going to play basketball, they want to gather a team around them right. where they know, they, they click together. They know when Sparky's going to make his break to the, to the mm-hmm. basket and I know how to throw the ball to him. Mm-hmm. For somehow in the church, it doesn't click for men that I need to gather with some brothers and have go on this journey with Jesus. Absolutely. Not They're only for discipleship, but for prayer and yes. just dealing with life issues. Is that yes. what it'd be about? There, there's a book called The Sleeping Giant. Mm. You know who that is in the churches, who the sleeping giant is? It's the men. Mm. You wake those guys up, and that's why revival is happening in Pittsburgh. Hallelujah. Among Protestant men, Catholic men, all over the city, mm-hmm. stuff is happening because those men are waking up. Men are missing out, but it's not because they're not spiritually hungry. They're hungry. They need somebody to connect with them, to reach out to them, the way Jesus did for the disciples. Amen. We need to seek God to raise up a generation of men after God's own heart, like David. Well, there's some big events coming this August, just in a couple of months. We're going to have the Franklin Graham event. Absolutely. Something to get involved with there. September, we're going to have an event, uh, the, men's re- the first citywide men's retreat at Ogle Bay. Uh, we'll call it Going Deep. You can check that out on our website. Well, you can come back and talk more about that. Love come to. back and, and tell us more about it. Thank you guys for coming on. Yeah. You know, time goes by real quickly, but we do invite you to come back. Mm -hmm. And we want to do some more programming for men. We want Cornerstone to be part of the the, the men. So we'll see what God has in store. This is at the heart of the Lord because the enemy that draws men from the church is is not the spirit of God. It's the spirit of the enemy. He wants to separate us and keep us down because I know that when we get it, men may be slow to get it, but when we get it, we got it, yeah. you know, and so we're, thank you. we're thankful yeah. that you guys came to share this. Well, it's almost time for us to uh, lift up your prayer request in today's end of the program. But before we do that, let's see what's on tomorrow's Real Life. Tomorrow on Real Life. Helpful information on your investments on real money. Arlene Williams has another great recipe in the Real Life Kitchen. And Peter Greer discusses the unspoken crisis, Mission Drift. That's tomorrow on Real Life. Let me tell you my real life story. Dear Mr. Black, one day I was watching soap operas on TV and I started to surf the channels during a commercial. As I was clicking the remote, I heard a guy say, if anyone has a problem, feel free to call us and speak to one of our prayer partners. It was you, Don Black, on the Real Life program telling us that God would fix any problem through prayer. Well, I had a problem and I needed some help, so I did just that and called the Cornerstone Network prayer line. And Jackie, a prayer partner, asked if she could pray for me. I explained to Jackie that my sister, a widow and nearly 80 years old, had a big problem with frozen pipes in her home. She could not afford a plumber and we were concerned that her frozen pipes might break. She was worried and up all night checking the faucets. Jackie, the prayer partner, listened to me go on and on without interrupting and then she began the most beautiful prayer, specifically about this problem. I felt goosebumps on my arms and I got the chills. I knew God would answer her amazing prayer. I even said when, not if, but when my sister receives her miracle regarding the frozen water pipes, I will send Cornerstone Network the testimony about it along with the donation. Well, Jackie's faith was so evident in her amazing prayer that I knew in my heart that my sister would be granted this miracle. Now listen to this. Just five and a half hours after Jackie prayed, my sister called me and said, we got our miracle. She heard water running and thought at first that some of the frozen pipes had burst. But when she went upstairs to check, she saw water freely flowing in both the sink and the tub. We were both amazed and started praising God for answering Jackie's fervent prayers on behalf of my sister's problem. Enclosed is a small donation for your ministry. Thank you, and God bless. Sincerely, Sylvia and Patricia, my sister. We're back for the prayer time. You know, I'm thankful you saw that little spot that just ran for testimonies of God's faithfulness. When he touches lives, it's so important for you to share it with other people. 
you know, when, when God does something in you and answers a prayer, share it. And that's what we've had. We've got a couple here that I wanted to just share with you. Maxine, uh, who had uh, never lived alone until her brother James had went to a nursing home. She had a, a dread and a fear that something was going to happen bad to her. She said she could be attacked. You know, I understand that, that uncertainty. She called for prayer and was freed and delivered from those fears. Now yeah, she, she's, you, she feels Jesus. secure. Jesus. Praise God for that. San, Sandra called because uh, her daughter Jessica was going to have an MRI of her head and her body, and she wanted prayer. The MRI came back completely clean. Yeah, she's right thanking God. God for this miracle. Uh, and wants to thank us for praying for her. Praise the Lord for that. Pastor Helen, I'm not sure. I think I read that right. And then salvations. You know, I'm rejoicing when people come to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. When a brother or sister joins the family of God, it's such a, a remarkable miracle. You know, everything else is great, but this is the biggest miracle of all because it, it lasts forever. When you're healed, we're going to die of something, brothers, unless Jesus comes back. But when you're saved, you're gone. you got it forever. Mm -hmm. So here we go with uh, our uh, our our new body of Christ, Cookie, called in from uh, Coriopolis. Coriopolis. With a uh, rededication. Coriopolis. And, and so Garfield family. called. Uh, and we see more and more men coming to the Lord, too. Which you is, see, he needs a Bible. Needs a Bible. We're going to send Get you one. Amen. We're gonna send, we'll send you a Bible. And we're thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord Amen. for his faithfulness. We have prayer requests. Mm -hmm. You guys will say a prayer. We're almost, we're almost out of time with this. Okay. Terry, do you have one there that you, that you want to read? Oh, um, well, I Quickly. have, okay, Betty, she needs some deliverance from um, some spiritual warfare that she's having, and uh, I have several that are having some food addictions and people that just need some physical healings. Well, let's put them all here in the middle, guys. I'm sorry we don't okay. have time to read all of them, mm -hmm. and there's many more behind they've these. they been prayed for by the prayer partners. They have been prayed for the prayer partners, but let's put our hand on this in the name of Jesus. Father, we touch these pieces of paper knowing that each paper represents a life and each life is a person that you love and each person that you love you've given them the opportunity to know you through Jesus we thank you for these new believers Father, who's come into the family father fill them and equip them help them find a church that they can plug into that they can grow and be all the men that you've designed them as men and women of God every other need Lord we lift up to you our faith stretched out Lord, for the finances, for their physical healings, for their emotional relationships. Lord, help them, Father, in the places they have need. And Lord, I just pray that they get engaged with your spirit and the word and find a church and become the people you've created them to be. Lord, thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you for coming and being part of the program, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. It's good to thank see you brothers. So good to meet thank you. you for your You know, the word says how good and how pleasant it is. When brothers dwell in unity. Dwell That's together right. in unity. So I feel that Pretty unity way. of the spirit here in, right. the, in the program. And I hope you felt it at home. Get involved. Get engaged. Mm -hmm. God is faithful and he wants to take you to where you could never, ever imagine you could go. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Let's go, let's go to our end of the program with Malcolm Williams singing in your glory. Yeah. Malcolm. That was such a powerful prayer. It's a blessing to be able to be in the glory of God. This was my prayer that I asked God. Lord, let me come into your glory to a new place I'd never seen. And then we always talk about next level, next level. I said, please let me come into your glory. Lord, 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 Lord. To a new realm I've never been. And I told the Holy Ghost, I said, in your glory, there is peace. Oh. My need, every need is met when I worship with you, and in his glory, trouble see. So, God, in your glory, you know what happens? God, you reveal yourself to me. 
to me. And then I prayed, reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Just a simple prayer that you can ask God. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. That's what I'm praying, God. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. I said, I want to dwell in your glory. I want to dwell. And then I asked God, I said, show yourself to me. I said, God, I want to know who you are. I want you to show yourself to me. I pray that I can walk alongside them like they did in the Bible days. Show yourself to me. Just like Moses, God. I want you to show yourself to me. I prayed, I want to dwell in your glory. And then I asked one more thing. I said, expose yourself to me. I said, God, I want to know you in an intimate way. Reveal who you are to me, Jesus. Because I want to dwell in your glory.